Feature Friday. The freshest. <laughs> What's up, people? Welcome to Feature Friday, to Feature Friday Plus. <laughs> today we're joined in by Gary Valenciano. Sorry for the lulls. Today I am losing it. Just saying. What's up, boss? <laughs> thanks Welcome. for coming on, man. <laughs> it's good to be here with you guys, and I, I want to thank you already right now as we start off just by thanking you for you know I mean reviewing some of the stuff that I've put out. Not only me, but all the others you know who just pour their hearts out into what they do. You know, it means a lot to us. Uh, oh, well. it's an it's absolute pleasure. pleasure man like Honestly. it's uh, I, th I think we were talking about it not 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 long ago um and i think we, we actually spoke about it with kiana i think about a few, a few weeks ago mm. um and we were like it's just so mind-blowing to us that I, I i literally think the philippines must be one of the most blessed uh, countries in the world when it comes to uh, singing i kid you not man it's ridiculous you guys have it it's crazy and and that the, you know obviously the fun bit now for us is kind of like discovering new sounds and new singers and new music yeah. and uh, uh, thanks to the podcast and things like this we've been able to discover you know music from different industries and one that has definitely like uh probably because i, I reckon it's because of the cultural like similarities you know mm. gary um yes. but it has captivated us more than most of them so it, it, it's just been another man well you know i mean i really don't know what to say i mean i i <laughs> I, uh, the Philippines, especially, you know, many of the artists here have always been looking for means and ways to somehow, you know, be exposed and expressed all around the world. And, and now we have this medium and there are people like you, you know, who get to do that for us. So no, we may not perform in front of thousands of people in other parts of the world, but this uh, reaches so many more, you know, than just thousands of people. So, you know, you say blessed, yeah, I feel blessed that we have people like you, you know, supporting what we put out. So thank you oh. so very much. No, honestly, you have no idea how much that means to us as well, because people like you have really inspired us um, in our own creations as well. Because as musicians and creators, you know, you always you're always looking for that source of inspiration. And there are individuals that really spark that. And with your creations, uh, I mean, it, they, they just reach a different level, you know, that there is such alignment when it comes to composing and translating that into lyricism. It's, it's really mm -hmm. admirable. So thank you again. <laughs> <laughs> no Let's just say thank you to each other for an hour. <laughs> nah, Gary, and also your, your story is quite special. Uh, uh, and I, I think that that's the, that's the interesting bit about like, you know, music because we, we just, you know, we heard a, a lot of your songs and, and, and some of your music. And by the way, you have a discography that's so big, dude. It's <laughs> ginormous. So holy moly, dude. you know? So, um, but, but now like getting, getting this opportunity, obviously to speak to you and stuff like that. And, and your, your story is, 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 is insane that you've been doing it's this for such a long time and, and mm. still strong and, and the, the things you kind of stand for are just um, mind blowing to me, you know? Yeah, it's been 38 years. <clears throat> in Congratulations. the industry. Nice. You know, uh, I just celebrated the anniversary last April 13. And somehow, and I, I guess, you know, I guess I've come to realize that with all the concerts and all the performances, you may be singing the same music over and over and over and over again, but you're never in front of the same crowd. Mm. That's right. So whatever, whatever they're facing at that particular time, I mean, a song that would have not mattered to them before may matter to them now. So <laughs> I try and treat every performance like it's the last, you know, like, oh, like this is yeah. it. You know, if I'm going to, if this is the last day I perform, it's got to be done this way. You know, um, it, it can be in front of five, 5,000, 50,000, 500,000 people, but it's really got to come from only one source. And, and that's here because people can see right through can see right through you when every time I'm on stage or even yeah. when I'm on television or even here, you know, when I'm on, when I'm online and it pays to really make sure that it doesn't come from just here. It's of easy course. No, well, it, it, and it translates, it translates a lot. I, we've seen a few of your live performances and we have seen you uh, do your videos from for YouTube and stuff. And the, there is a unfiltered genuinity that, now that you explain why why is it that you perform the way that you do, it makes sense. Why is it that it connects so easily? Why do we connect so emotionally, yeah. so easily to the pieces? It's not just the musical composition and the delivery. It has to do with that 
emotion factor that you're so invested in 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 the performance as well it must be exhausting yeah though. do you not find that draining that kind of every time you you compose. after shows that you go like whoa relax for a week <laughs> but not, not just physically gary but like emotionally and, and, and mentally to some extent you know yes it it it's all all of that all put together okay mm. because i'll tell you the biggest reward more than uh you know more than performing in front of 10,000 people which is great okay, <laughs> yes, yes, it is. We're all <laughs> it's, it has a certain um level of fulfillment that you cannot put into words. You can't yeah. even put into a song, okay? But it's just like, wow. But that's only momentary. Mm -hmm. Then you get into your car, you're headed home, no more music, you're just sitting back there and what comes into mind are the faces of people which we don't get to see now because yeah. times have changed. Um, so yeah, it gets draining physically because I, you know, when I'm on stage, I try and move a bit. You know? <laughs> a little bit, just uh, a tiny bit. <laughs> and then... It's also what I receive online, the comments that I get when people begin to pour their hearts out mm -hmm. and there's no need for them to lie. You know, they're, not, they're, they're taking time to write down this whole story of what they're going through and it's just them sharing and letting their hearts out, you know, and it gets, I do respond, you know, I, I do take time sometimes like with my latest song, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, Make Us Whole Again. Make Us Whole Again, yeah. I, I just keep playing track. it time and time again and I just respond to whoever's there. Yeah. as much as I can and I and I always try and compare that to somebody like for example Michael Jordan who's my top you know he's, <laughs> a, he's the goat for me no oh, it's nice. but if he if he reached out to me and just said hey Gary you know thanks for the support you know yeah, that's, of that's, course. that's gonna leave a lasting imprint in my heart <laughs> so if I can do that if I can do that for others you know then I think then you go beyond the call of duty you go beyond mm -hmm. just performing and then okay bye i'm done but you really yeah. get to meet people at the point of their need which has been done for me in the past many times before so i also want to do the same for when i call them fans um there's a certain a connotation uh, to it isn't it yeah to it when you say fans they're just yeah. fans but they're people That's these right. are people who reach out and who just hope to hear something and if i don't reach out to them they may read my response to other people and that may apply to them as well so you kind of hit many birds with many stones you know in, well, this, in a way. this is kind of like a, and, and this is what's interesting uh, about you gary that because you, you've been doing this for a while where you've seen the evolution and also technology how it's taking hold of of music and you know th this was obviously impossible just 15 20 years ago mm -hmm. you know oh, yeah. at, at this level yeah. and you know this whole idea of not only you know, having a fan base, yeah. but then also interacting with them often. Just such a personal level, yeah. yeah. So uh, it, it's it definitely awesome to hear that, like, uh, you know, people like you who have literally seen the evolution of the music game see so much value in there because we, we were discussing it with, with many artists and it's like sometimes the comments and, and kind of so much feedback, there's, there's so many it opinions. very overwhelming. Yeah, they, they, it, there's so many opinions regarding it, right? Mm -hmm. It's like too much positive may be detrimental or too much True. negative can be detrimental or maybe ignoring it all together uh, mm -hmm. isn't the right answer so it's like it, i always find it very intriguing especially uh, you know people at your level where it's like yeah. constant you know uh, yeah. it it's always interesting to hear how you approach such a constant feedback of of uh, opinions, opinions and, and, you know yeah well <clears throat> i know that i cannot please everyone and there are people who are not going to enjoy my music for now <laughs> but I'm thinking, I'm thinking oh, yeah. later on they may go through something in life and mm. if i may share okay there was one time i walked into a radio station this old back in the day i mean um like early 2000s or maybe late 90s okay. and the dj had a microphone just like this okay and he was um talking to the audience on air and he was saying hey we have a very special in-studio guest and he'll be with us right after you know we take a break for a while so he started playing the commercials online and he looked at me and he goes you know gary i'm here today because of you i never met this guy before oh, wow. and he goes, yeah, I, I used to be um i used to be a drunkard i i used to take a lot of drugs and i was a womanizer and so my wife said i come home one more time like that and she's gone so one day i came home exactly like what she warned me about i came home drunk high and i walked in and she took everything from the furniture to the kids everything and because I was so high, you know, it didn't hit me like much at all. 
I went up to my room. I opened my drawer and I pulled out my 45 caliber. And I cocked it and I put it against my head and I pulled the trigger. And he goes, you know, Gary, 45 calibers never jam. <gasps> mine, mine did. So what? I decided to get into my car and just drive as fast as I could on the main highway and just smash my car onto a post and let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. And as he was driving, now I have to take you back in time because what was sticking out of his car was a CD. I know that's kind of old school. <laughs> but it, was, it was my CD that was sticking out of the tray. And, um, and he remembered his wife telling him, why don't you listen to this song? It's Gary Valenciano's song because she could see he was going down, yeah. downhill. Mm -hmm. And so he looked at it and he just put in the song. He put in the CD and the song that he listened to was Take Me Out of the Dark. Oh my wow. God. From back in the day. And then he looks at me and that's why I'm here. All right, we're back with Gary Valenciano and I was like, <laughs> but you see, it didn't play a role at the time that the wife was saying, listen to it, but it played a role at the time that Later. he almost took his life. So these are real stories, not, you know, not fabricated. And the thing is, you know, when I write my music, it got to the point where I would think, wait, maybe I can write a pop tune. Maybe I can write something that would just get people up on their feet and all. That's not what's been coming into my heart. And I'm not forcing myself to write inspirational music. It's just that there's a sense of knowing that that's what people need at this mm. time. And it can be the simplest of songs. It can be the fastest, the craziest, the most dramatic. Uh, but it's going to speak to someone. And that's more than enough. If even just one, you know, just comes and responds and says, thank you, I needed that right now. Ah, okay. Yeah, got that, that 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 sort of counts as as you know latin awards and all these your know, different awards yes. you can yeah. get yeah. right yeah. honestly yeah. that's really yeah. what it is yeah you know i can come home let's say one day i win a grammy award wow let's say so nice <laughs> i have the award up on my shelf that's great but that will symbolize just how many people artists can actually reach popular artists mm -hmm. or non-popular artists you know there are many who've just become popular on youtube yeah. You know, they may not be known, you know, the way others have been known, but they're making an impact in people's lives. So Absolutely. that's for me what really counts right now. It uh, well, it's inspirational. Just just listening to you and your whole journey, I think the the impact of music itself has always marked humanity, right? So yes. there's always right. music has always marked the most historic moments ever in humanity, right? And to, to be able to somehow be so aligned faith, ma mind and matter into this source of inspiration that allows you to create music this way in order to touch others, you know, find, be the light where the light is needed. And that, that, that thought process is so very difficult to understand, but I don't think it needs to be understood. It just has to be, you know? Yeah. And yeah, that's and listening to your to your stories and how 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 much of an impact it really has in in a lot of people that we might never ever get to know, but um, how how influential just one simple composition can be really really makes me put my whole mind to perspective. Like changes my whole perspective. Of into writing, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Because then writing, then it's much more than just writing. It, That's it's, right. It's literally. Yeah. The, the concoction of emotions that can change someone's life. Yeah. You know, yeah. So. I mean, that song, uh, uh, Make Us Whole Again, it took me a year to write. Oh, wow. Uh, I started last year and then I finished it, you know, just before uh, when I saw the numbers in the Philippines, because I don't know what the situation of the whole pandemic is from you're in Venezuela. Uh, so, we're, we're in London, but yes, we are, okay, we're from London. Venezuela, but uh, in London, is lessened a little bit in the, um, in the uk like the the whole vaccine and stuff right it's it's working god, its way yeah, yeah like, god willing it keeps going up like it keeps going well like the vaccination still going up mm -hmm. and everyone you know we go keeps back improving. to normality yeah. but uh in in south america it is not as good it's um tough. and and the philippines i'm hearing it's it's not it's so not so good yeah, it's not, it's not so good. I mean, we're trying and everything. So when I saw the numbers rising, because mm. numbers went down, the numbers of incidents of people having it, they were going down. And then all of a sudden, it's, it's skyrocketed. Yeah. Now it's higher now than ever before. Oh, so then I started writing last year. And uh, what came out was, um, it started out like this. And then it went here. 
And then it continued. <laughs> For a year, it just kept going and going, and I couldn't get myself to finish it. And it just kept on and on and on. And if you see the lyrics, it's like, what? You're going to put that into the song? I said, that sounded good then. But then it changed because, you know, you just have to leave yourself open to the yeah. times and, and where you're being led. And I tried doing it, and I just said, you know what? Let's put let's put this here, and let's put, a, let's put this effect here, and let's put the bass here, and let's put a guitar... But then when I was playing it, I said, wait, I don't want to lose the message into the overpowering arrangement of a song. Mm. Okay. I think the message is enough. So I just said, you know what? Let me just sit down here and let's let's do it. And that's what came out. Now, it's been it's been a long time because the last song I wrote was in 2014. Wow. So, really? Yeah. I was already saying, oh, maybe maybe that's it. Maybe maybe it's gone. Maybe maybe no more. Maybe I should do something else and all. But then this came out and so now I'm a little inspired. Nice. To try and experiment again with other things that Please I used do. to. You yeah. Know, we'll see. We'll see. I, it's a hit or miss, you know, and if I miss <laughs> one song, it doesn't mean that that's the end. I can always try again. Of course. That's right. That's right. I, I, think, I think also like, um, you know, it's just, it's the same as like a kind of got getting out of, say you play a sport or the gym, you kind of get out of the gym for a bit and then you just need repetition. Yeah. Yeah. We discuss this all the time. You know, it, it's, Maybe you know. Over, I think you did hit it with "Make Us Whole Again." Absolutely, I, and, I, and I think such a vulnerable piece, so very touching. In the most simplistic way, though, it's super understandable to anyone. That's it. it. Yeah, That's it, it, it was. It was. It was exactly. It embodied perfectly what the whole world was going through in such a minimalistic been, yeah. way. But also, I think you have beautiful musical compositions, right? <laughs> so they feel so very tender in the musical yeah. arrangement of it as well, even you know, though it's, 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 you know, it's not overcomplicated. Yeah, it also has to do with perhaps the way I've always wished people would have talked to me, mm. you know, and, and, and it's happened where even when I make a mistake, the people that talk to me, even when I was younger, even before I became an artist, they would, many of them would not come to me saying, Rah! it was more like, okay, so you know, you did something wrong, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Okay, come here. You're going to be okay. Right. Fine. So when I think of how I was treated when I was younger, yeah. and I come from a very colorful background, <laughs> but when I think of that, I realized that those things that happened earlier on perhaps played a role into why I want to speak to people the way I was spoke, I've been spoken mm. to. Mm. And it's making an it's it's making an impact. And I think that, you know, especially that line where it goes, um for uh defeated from those who've gone with no goodbyes. I mean, how many people today are we hearing of, you know, I lost my brother, I lost my father, I didn't even get to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. You know, I, he was he was OK yesterday. And then at night, he just because of the pandemic. So these are real things that I'm thankful I was given a chance to put it into a musical form, which for me is a form of communication where you cannot get somebody going, what? No, no <laughs> way. They listen to the whole song. They're stuck yeah. listening to the whole song. You have their attention 100 percent. That's why yeah. they repeat it and they play it again. Because it speaks and speaks and speaks to them again and again. So I think for all the artists or songwriters out there who are hoping to somehow make an impact too, um, keep writing. You'd never know. You'll never know just what kind of song you're going to come up with. It doesn't even have to be one that sounds like mine or that speaks like the way I do. But just you know, music going. has... Yeah. What, yeah, it's such a powerful medium. In times like these, people look at music for sources of inspiration Absolutely. You know, just to be happy just to forget for a while what's really going on outside or inside yeah. so with the music you know you want to write music add your story into the music and watch where it takes you <laughs> we, we um when when we uh, you know it's quite funny because specifically your music is the one that after we review and stuff like that like after the video or maybe during the video uh it kind of sparks conversation you know yeah. and, and it some say it's more kind of the philosophical side of conversation where we kind of start wondering and, and questioning things that are not usually questioned and we kind of go down that rabbit hole, right? But um, I, one of the things that a lot of people kind of like uh, send me messages about, it's like uh, I said in one of the videos that if aliens were to visit us on Earth, right? And if they say they're real or angels or, or anything that's uh, otherworldly, right? 
I was saying that the best way to kind of introduce them to humanity would be through art and music. It would it oh, wouldn't yeah. be it wouldn't be through um, a, a conversation, debate, or, or or media or no. It would be through art, music, and dance, right? Because yeah. music has embodied. Ballad, you touched on this just earlier. It has embodied humanity really well. Emotions, because emotions are very complicated and 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 awfully difficult to understand and explain. But you can feel them way easier than you can explain them. And music has that capability to translate. You can listen to music that says nothing. Absolutely. It's just an orchestra playing, and you're yes. like oh, you're moved by it. And maybe that's why they call it the universal language. Because uh -huh. it is you know? there. There is something so like there's nothing lost lost in translation when it comes to music. The, like you that. could be listen. You could be listening to a song that is written in Japanese, sang in Japanese, but <laughs> the musical arrangement and composition will take you through a whole emotional roller coaster, and you understood the song without understanding yeah. the language. Well, brother, look at look at our case, right? Sometimes you have songs that are in Tagalog, and, and we we review yes. sometimes artists from Brazil that speak in Portuguese, France, Philippines, Korea, yeah. and somehow they still resonate with our fibers, you know, and, and, and us as human beings. So it, it's, it's, uh, it's truly, I think you're correct. It truly is the universal kind of language of people. And then obviously art in terms of a, a, a plastic, plastic arts. Art. I think that yes. would also be a, a good introduction to something that doesn't, is trying to understand humans, you know, because for some reason, plastic arts has also been able to manage to explain pain and suffering better than any any other piece same as music yeah. and also love and happiness you know and then everything in between yeah right yeah. and then dance i think is the one that it's embodies a physical expression of it yeah. of it right because mm. i got because i think those are the three things that no other being on earth does better than humans <laughs> right those right. are the two things music dance and plastic arts yeah. you're right I yeah. might I might put in that category. I've been thinking about this lately a lot. And I, literature. I would add literature into the whole equation. Sure, sure. I might add sports to that as well. Do you? Yes. I might I may just add sports into that uh into that <laughs> presentation to my alien friends when they come and visit <laughs> us, Gary. No, I, I think that the fact is sports, like when 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 a team makes the winning goal or the winning shot and the way people react yeah i'm sure if any if any supernatural being or, or <laughs> alien were to see that it's like what is that don't have that what, what is that they, they, they look, <laughs> we, we can't describe what there's the shouting which can be associated with anger but this is not about anger this is elation. about inexplicable yeah. joy you know elation yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so crazy. yeah i agree with you i agree uh, with you you know I, i'll never forget every time i'm in the u.s when i go on tour nice of course my audience is mostly filipino Right. But the, the staff or the cast or uh, the, the staff or the crew of the concert or of the venue, be it mm. a, you know, a theater or a casino, they're Americans. Whether white or black, some, some, some of them come up to me and go, uh, yo, dude, uh, that song, um, that one where you, you know, your voice, man, dude, that, I got you right here. I know, I know I may be a bodyguard, but oh, you did something to me tonight. <laughs> Oh, bro, give it, give it. And I'm like, well, are you serious? Which song was it? Oh, that it's a duet. It's it's but, the, but a good accent. It, yeah, yeah. Great <laughs> that, that's our father on the on the production chair, uh, Gary. <laughs> hello, sir. He says but, hello, you know, that's, that's how it's been, and it it really, you know, uh, more than when I go up to my room, hi, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> when I go up to my room, I'm smiling, you know, and you know, sometimes when I arrive, you have these like one time. Okay, one time I was in the Middle East. Okay. And they were so strict yeah. in the Middle East as to what time I should be on. And I was allowed to sound check at 3 p.m. Ooh. summer in the oh Middle my God. East. Whoa, dude. So I put the mic against my mouth and so, oh, you know, but I had to sound check. That's the only time I was given. We were worried that the mixing boards would melt in the heat. <laughs> so anyway, so these bodyguards, there were like six of them, you know looking like this and they're telling me, oh, where are you going? Where are you going? I said, I'm, I'm going to the stage and all. Okay, you only have uh, 30 minutes to do. Okay, fine. So I did everything I had to do. Then the concert. God, and I was in front of people and I told the Filipinos in Tagalog, I said, listen, I know the security is really tight, but let's show them what fun is all about, shall we? <laughs> so the Filipinos were like, ah! And then I was making them, I sang a song called Shout for Joy. Okay, one of my old songs. And it's an inspirational song. Shout for joy, sing his praises, lift your voices unto the Lord. And I was telling the audience to join me. And when I pointed to one side, 
the same bodyguards were also doing this. <laughs> and I was like, yes. No way. <laughs> and then they came backstage and it was a completely different attitude and character that they uh, had. You know, and, and they were like, they went to my wife and said, uh, your husband is like the, like the, uh, what? He said something like, uh, like he's like, like the best in the world. He's like the Superman of, uh, and I was like, what is like that? Seriously? And they took me out to the car and they were welcoming me. They wanted me to come back. And these are the things that really make me miss what it was like. Yeah. yeah. I was going to ask you, yeah, I was going to ask you, how has the whole virtual development of, of performing really like, affected you because i know there's okay. a lot of a, a lot a lot of uh artists like we've we've spoken with a few and they they really miss i personally miss going up on stage and and seeing a few people dancing up to what i do and and uh i i don't know i maybe you feel the same How, how's the whole uh online? There's, um, in the beginning when i first yeah. started doing online concerts it was a challenge for me because we couldn't bring anybody here Okay. Mm. We couldn't bring technical people here, so everything was me. Oh, we had oh, a camera set up. I had a switchboard, and I had to, you know, do all of these things to get different, you know, angles and all. But I was working with my nephew Joshua, who uh, apparently is also into these things, and he nice. learned <laughs> you know, to do things. And my uh, my niece Julia, and we were all together. And um, now, when I did the concerts, it was nice to see numbers. You know, it was a fundraiser, and people were were donating. It's great. Awesome. But nothing beats eye-to-eye -eye contact. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Where you, sometimes you don't even have to speak and know what the person's going through. And yeah. your song, you can tell from their eyes that, oh, my, they're, they're, you know, there's something going on with this person. However, in the other concerts that I've done on Zoom, where it's a smaller, more intimate group of people, uh -huh. I get to see all of them. Ah, I see. And I get to see them up close, this close. Yeah, because in a concert they're this they're far. far away. It, it yeah, hope to see them, right? But this one is like, and then I can call their names out while I'm performing, and so some of them are on their phone, and let's say Waleska, I say, uh, "Hey, Waleska, yeah. oh, oh my god, they, they shout, <laughs> he, he called he, he made a shout out, and I'm like, yeah, you know, because I can see them. Yeah, yeah, it's hard though, and I think that honestly, I think the next time I'm given a chance to be on stage, I'm just gonna ask the band to play some amazing ethereal chord <laughs> and just let it fly and i let i just want to stand up there and just enjoy just take it all in being with people again yeah. you know and i'll just say are you guys ready for this because i'm i'm been looking forward to this you ready yeah nice. oh my god I, i'm already ready <laughs> yeah no right? I, i agree there is just there's something there is we talk about it often in the channel where there is a Uh, foreign element, let's, let's say it like that, where everything aligns in a live performance, right? Where yes. a technical team, your, your crew backstage, your band, every, everything, and then the crowd and you align in this really ethereal form where like, you know, if, if people didn't believe in a higher power, that's the physical representation of it, you know, like when everything just really falls into place and It's like you're um, sucked in into this little atmosphere that, like, coexist, like coexisting all together in this brilliant moment that it would last maybe three minutes of the song, but in that, in those three minutes, everybody was in the right moment, in the right mindset, and everything just falls into place. And yeah, you probably experienced this, Gary, but it's like uh, in that moment, not nothing outside of that mini world that you've created matters that's right, right? it's like it's like yeah. the rest of the world doesn't exist is it it's relevant? Just yeah. that that presence that moment that moment with my audience that's it and you, you have them by the palm of your hand you know you can you can say and it, and it really matters to me what i say on stage uh -huh. um, because many times foreign acts come to the philippines but they just do their songs sure and i don't know if anybody tells them Hey, listen, these guys speak English pretty well. So you can speak <laughs> yeah. English, even if your English is broken, just speak. Because especially in the Philippines, we want to hear, we want to know more about the artist. Sing your songs, but we've heard your songs time and time again. Sure. We want to hear you say something. Mm. Well, so we th that's the whole reason why we're doing this. Uh, the, the feature of oh, Friday wow. Plus and having, having the opportunity to get to know the artist on an unfiltered setting. It's, it's totally honest and And, and kind of unedited, unedited, just conversation. I think that's why podcasts, I mean, 
it, podcasting wasn't our idea. I wish I could have the, I could have all the credit to making up, you know, radio <laughs> and podcasting. But it, 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 it was, it's, it's such a great idea, and especially in the last five years, where you know it, it, we've been so sort of media oriented and mm. edited, yeah. and and it's kind of like a specific Fabricated content that there's a specific yeah, yeah. agendas that get pushed. And... and then when you get your favorite artists, just kind of like just talking and being them, right? Because it, it's very difficult to put on a, a mask for too long, two hours yeah. or an hour or whatever you know eventually the real you is gonna come out you know and and it's 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 so fun when when you do get the chance to speak to to artists in like an unfiltered way and just just get to know what's truly here and then yeah. how we oh, yeah. he verbalize it then from here you know so it because music I, tells you a lot about a person but then conversing with them is just you know it's awesome you know I, i'll never forget the time when i watched you two they came over to the philippines and um, the lead you watched, singer. You watched them live. I watched them live. Oh, nice. You know, and what was amazing was that what they prepared wasn't just as the concert that they took on tour to other parts of the of Asia and the world. Right. They prepared for each country that they went to. Their oh. videos were not just you know videos that they they showed in every concert. They really were made for the particular country they were going wow, to. So awesome. it made their audience feel. Oh, you know, they had a, they were about this big and they had a screen that was like 350 feet all the way across. <laughs> and their last shot was them singing like this. And then the sun came out with eight rays. That's our flag. The Philippines the flag. Yeah. To the side, boom. And then the whole backstage was, the whole screen was like the Philippine flag. See me even telling you my hair standing on it. <laughs> but it, you know, for somebody who's been in the industry for 38 years to see that, you know, to see that, that you prepared for us, you know, so that's, that's for me, is so crucial in making your audience feel like they're not just a bunch of people that are watching a concert you've done in other parts of the world. You want to make sure that, no, I'm, I'm here now because I'm here for you. This night is your night. Mm. You know, there are things I try and do some research, like, especially when I'm performing for students, yeah. I try and ask what's, what's the issue in this university or what's going on here? And then I try and include that with not going into too much detail, you know, because they're there to forget their problems. Of course, of course. When you're, when you're able to touch on these things, it makes them realize that, hey, you know, I, I am concerned about you guys. I've been doing this for 38 years. You haven't even started yet. And you're mm -hmm. already going through so much. How can I help? Maybe with this song. And then maybe with this song. And then it does help. And I get the feedback online or they, they, they send me a message that I may not have read, but my team gets to read some of it. And then they nice. send it to me and say, hey, look, this one responded and this one responded. So that's Brother, Let I, me ask you something then. What, what's, yeah. uh, what was your, um, what, like your inspiration coming up? Like what inspired kind of like your, your life performances? Who did you look up to? Like we're kind of like, oh yeah, that's kind of like what I want to be like when, when, you know, when I'm start developing and stuff like early in the years, you know, maybe... Okay. your first three years in the industry you know okay well my first three years in the industry were spent on doing a lot of songs i didn't have any music then but i would do covers and they were basically of al Jarreau, who is a jazz artist okay so long here though and michael jackson oh wow so nice. what i would do was i would use my voice yeah. and make my voice dance and do all the scatting and then at the same time i'd move i would try and incorporate both very and then later Al on huh? very very algero very yeah yeah very Michael, that's yeah. what i was doing that's what yeah. i was doing and um uh later on i realized could write music now what i see what you see here which is my studio i don't know what i play I just, <laughs> you know, whatever i feel you tell me to play a, a song in the key of e or e minor i'm like can i you don't know what that is sing? i don't know what that is you know so i just play what i feel mm -hmm. you know and then the melodies come out but then that's how it started and i had to move away from that because i was often introduced as the michael jackson of the philippines okay. I see. and i had to correct people and say no i'm i'm gary but gary, of course the philippines you know and so i purposely tried to move away from that image but often touching on it at some point in the concert i'd say okay i know you guys are waiting for this so <laughs> let me share with you what i used to do Okay. But I don't only, you know, at that time, I would listen to a lot of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Nice. I would yes. listen to a lot of Cool and the Gang. I would listen to a lot of uh, DeBarge. I mean, it's still on my playlist. And <laughs> I'm working out. I'm listening to that stuff. And 
that's how it started for me. And then I started, I remember my first upbeat song, I had no equipment at all. So I had to use two cassette decks and I would record my voice and then play it here and then record the other instrument with my voice. So I would record the drums, bass, the keyboards, all with my voice, you know, and then I would sing and then I'd put the backup vocals and that's what I would submit to the recording company and say, hey, here's my song. And they, what? you know, they, they were like, so that's how I used to do my stuff back then. What? But it was all with oh the God. desire to desire to just, you know what, let's just, let's make let's something just come new. out there and let's entertain. Right. And to hear the screams, especially of the girls, I must admit, <laughs> that was, if it was like this, that was good. But if it was like, the girls, okay, success. That's, that is in, indeed way better, Gary, yes. Winning. <laughs> So when I would step up on stage, you know, I would listen for that and then it kicked in. But nice. there was one time that I went to a, a school and I performed in a school because here in the Philippines at that time, there was no such thing as social media. Uh -huh. okay, so you would be invited to different universities and that's how you built up your, your, your following. Base, okay. yeah. So I, I ended up going to one school and an academy. And I wasn't placed in the very first of the show or the very last part of the show. And when I say first and last is, I was such a greenhorn that when I would be invited to all of these shows, there were many other artists that would come in between, but they saved the best for what was in the middle. Oh, so I would yeah. perform in the first, which is not just to open the show. It was to welcome people in. People wow. were walking in and I'm performing. Or the last one, when everybody's done, I'm the last one when people are walking out. Yeah. You know, that's how it was. <laughs> So I performed in this one school and they put me smack in the middle of the show. Nice. And I sang a song that spoke about unity. And it was the first time that I saw people stand up, put their hands together. There were no screams. But it, it, it generated a, hey, this is a different kind of impact that this performance has made. And I started getting feedback from people saying, that song you did that thing you did that, that the song the way you it wasn't about you're so good you know you're such a good dancer and you it was not about that it was about the message of the song and that's the day that i decided you know i think i want to make something out of my life using this you know i had no idea it would last for 38 years <laughs> <laughs> but i jumped in it was a big risk and you know i'm a type 1 diabetic so there's always been you know i had to, I've, I've always had to be careful Right, and I'm thankful that even those, even those uh, limitations that I have in my life have served as points of inspiration that I could put into a song. It makes yeah, it would... easier for me to express those those I songs, see. those kinds of I songs. I, I was gonna say because um, physical health limitations are such a um, yeah are, are such a, a stop barrier if you think about it, it from a, pers a performer's point of view. Um, I I, 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 can, I, I couldn't even imagine what it's like to go through something that physically prohibits your body from, from giving your best, from absolutely undressing yourself on stage from, from a, 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 an emotional perspective. That right? may be out of your control. And you know? out, yeah, something that is literally out of your reach, like you cannot control with your, both of those hands. And um, I, I cannot imagine what, what that feels like. So I, I was wondering, you know, how... How did you manage? What what was your thought process between the 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 toughest of your physical um, um, illness? It has to, has how have you managed it? Like what was your mental thought process of it? Well, there are many many thoughts. Okay, one is how come up to now I still have it? You yeah. know, I mean these are things that I have to deal with. Mm. Uh, but I've been blessed with a wonderful team. You know, starting with my wife. Who's, who knows about my my condition perhaps more than I do because I'm basing it on my experience, which right, I'm right. usually right in, but yeah. she's basing it on science and medicine and, you know, and all that. So she's really seen me in the worst of my, you know, my worst of conditions where I actually face to face with death, where I'm uh, having seizures and, you know, I'm being rushed to the hospital because my sugar is too low and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, but I remember the doctor saying, telling my mom first, this was before I met my wife, and then another doctor repeating it to my wife that Mrs. Valenciano, 
A type 1 diabetic is usually given a lifespan of 30 years from the day he's diagnosed. Yeah. I was diagnosed when I was 14. <gasps> and I'm 56 today. Wow. And I'm okay. I, you know, I'm, I feel strong. So I'm kind of going beyond what medical books and, and, and studies have shown. You look good too, brother. Oh, well, thank you very much. You're doing well. <laughs> no, but, but, you know, it, it, it makes me realize that it's a thorn in my flesh. But somehow, when people see me with my condition and know that I have my condition and can't believe sometimes yeah. what I do on stage, despite the fact that I have type 1 diabetes, it becomes more of a testimony of just God's goodness in my life. Because you're like, how do you do it? I look, it's not me. I'm just, I'm just going with what I'm led to do. And mm -hmm. he takes over. Because sometimes I step up on stage and my sugar levels are too high. Or sometimes in the middle of the show, it drops and I forget yeah. lyrics of songs that I know by heart. Right, yeah. right. And I'm just like on stage and I forget lyrics and I'm like, you guys sing it. Then at the end of it all, I get a, a bottle of juice and I'm saying, yeah. and I tell them I'm open with people. And I say, hey, you know, I only can take this when my sugar's low. So, you know, my sugar's low. So let's talk for a while. So, hey, how are you? Are you guys enjoying the show? Good. Yeah, yeah. Where are you guys from? Yeah, I'm drinking at the same time, but I'm taking time to bring it up. Of course. Yeah. You know, and that the, I guess the bigger challenge just came later on in my career. Like in 2018, I was performing on stage, on television. Oh no! It's my celebrating my anniversary, and suddenly I felt pain right here in the middle of my chest, oh. as in pain I'd never felt before. And I was dancing with my son Gabriel, okay. who is a powerhouse. So I have to keep <laughs> up with him. And at the end of the performance, and it's on video, I I hugged him and I said, "Son, pray for me because I have chest pains." And you'll see him go. So I thanked people and all, and this was live on TV. And after that, I went into my dressing room and a paramedic came to check me. My blood pressure was extremely high. And several days, actually a week after, I had myself checked. And the doctor said that I had a problem. So he says, you have a block. And it's a 95% block on the left main artery, which is known as the widow maker. I'm oh, Jesus. To, I cannot put a stent on that, Gary. We have to go in. And I was sedated when he was doing all of those tests. I said, oh, you mean open heart? Sure, go ahead. I had, <laughs> Do no, it. I had no idea what the whole process is like. You know, they open you up. They break you open because it's all bone. They break mm -hmm. you open. They pull the heart out. They stop the heart. They get a vein from the leg and they create a bypass. And, you know, that happened in, uh, when was that? I think May... 23 or something like that of uh or may 13 of of, of 2018 and then i'm sorry may 6 of may of 2018 and then i was healing and i was fine okay i was good i was slowly getting back into shape and all and i started building up fluid on the left side of my lungs and the doctor said come let's check and see what that's all about so they checked it and they said you know what what you're going through 30% of bypass patients go through that. But we're not concerned about the left side of your lungs. We're concerned about the right side of your body. And I looked and I said, why, what's going on? And basically what they discovered was, I mean, the doctor looked straight into my eyes and said, Gary, that's your kidney on the right. And um, you have cancer of the kidney. And I was like, oh, what? Yeah, you have. You have cancer of the kidney and we're going to have to go in again. So in May 6th was this. On June 13th was this. Holy so, moly. <laughs> you know the feeling of being there in the same operating room and I was yeah. left alone. They were about to put all of these things on me to sedate me and I was just there. And I, and I really, really spoke to God and I said, I'm, I'm, I'm here again. I, I thought this was enough. Oh, coupled with the fact that I'm a diabetic too. I, I'm here again. I, what's going to happen now? And the only thing I heard inside of me was him saying, yeah, and I'm here again with you. Oh, I'm sorry. See? No, I mean, I'm sorry. No, uh, no, it's it, wonderful. Please do not apologize. This is so inspirational. I, wow. So I went in and, and I had the operation and I was back in the room and the same uh, nurses, you know, helped me out again. And I said, hey, I remember you. And they, they, they were looking at me, you're here again. And I said, yeah. And the doctor said it was pretty big. It was four centimeters by six centimeters. So it had grown. And he says, you know, what's good, Gary, is that it's it didn't go anywhere else. It's awesome. just in your kidney. 
And then I remember the TV show I'm a part of, the whole cast came to visit me. Of course, there was no social distancing at that time. They came to visit me. They were asking me when I was coming back. And as they were talking to me, I got a message from the doctor saying, hey, Gary, I have good news for you. You're totally free of it. It's not found anywhere. You don't need radiation. You don't need all of these things that usually come after treatment like that. And I just looked at them and I said, hey, guys, look what I got. I got this message. I was like 15 pounds lighter than I am now. So I looked sick. I looked sickly. But it took time for me to work my way back to that. But, you know, when I was in my room and I opened up to look outside into the city, it's like life itself became more vibrant. Reaching people became, there was a, there was a depth of, of, of the need to reach people while I still can. It might sound the same as my other songs. So what? It's not the same audience. It will never be the same audience. So that's where I'm at today. You know, that's why if you if you check out all my other vlogs, you'll see me biking 139 <laughs> kilometers, 160 kilometers from my house all the way to the east coast or to the, the south coast or whatever. And you can see that there's so much joy because I can still do these things and I'm enjoying <laughs> myself so much. And that's just that. Now, the music is something else that I've really, you know, I'm like ready to go. I'm like, let's go. Let's do it. Are you sure, Gary, you can do it? I'll let you know when I can't do it. I will know when I can no longer do it. But right now, I think I still can. And um, I'm looking forward to the other songs that come out of this room, you know, in the near future. And oh, that's yeah. why when you look at my music and you hear my, my songs, it comes from way deep down inside because of so many things that I've had to face and I've had to go through. Yeah. And I may go through again in the near future, but he'll be there with me again. So I have nothing to worry about, you know. There, there, there's, um, there's a few like... Uh athletes that, that uh, I've, I've been listening to and actually a few artists that kind of ha have that in common where where they've had maybe an experience where it's maybe life-threatening or uh, mm. they were in a really dark place or maybe um uh you know they, they they've had an illness that they've had to deal with for a really long time and they what they what they all seem to to say kind of along your lines uh, it, it's things things become brighter, things become more intense. And, you know, it's, you, you, yes. you tend to enjoy, it's like that, you know, when you're a kid and you kind of have that giddy sense of excitement and, and, and things. Seeing the world for the first time again. Yeah, because, because it actually, if, if it, it seems just routine seems to take off a lot of the shine and all the bloody miracles that happen every day, yeah. you know, and you don't notice them. You know, like, you know, right now we're so lucky, like in the, in the, in the house we're recording, if you look at the window, it's like this beautiful tree that has like pink flowers and we see that every day, you know, but, but it's actually like really, really pretty, but because you see it every day, you're like, ah, it's just the tree that's outside the house. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's like a, that's like a miracle, dude. Like how the hell does that even happen? And that the sun shines perfectly and, yeah. and that, and, and, and people are happy and you go outside and you see a little bird and, and it, it's this kind of things i think routine and and just lack of perspective as well sometimes just yeah. kind of uh, takes away the shine yes. and then it seems people that do go through and, and see death face to face or yeah. see god face to face yes. right and speak to him directly uh, it, it, all of these things kind of regain its color and regain its its shine you know when I look back at my life now, I think that maybe I was meant to go through all of these things for a time such as this, as mm, now, right. for me to be able to write music when everybody today is facing similar death things, at similar very close things. range because yep. of the pandemic. So, uh, you know, uh, being able to write a song like this may not, it may not have happened had I not been as, you know, had, had I not gone through all of these things yeah. that has made me kind of sensitive to people's needs. Well, I, I think, you know, there's there's really no words to really explain what what emotionally and mentally one has to go through to really understand your spiritual needs as much as your physical needs, right? Because oh, yeah. cause your body always needs something. It's thirsty, it's hungry, it's tired, it's happy. And there's a constant need, physically speaking, right? But spiritually and and mentally there there are certain needs that sometimes we totally neglect 
due to the everyday life, the, the, the normal routine. But when you are faced with things that shake your faith or make you question your own personal thoughts and, and, and needs, spiritually you you become you know really aligned to what it is that your soul needs that your faith needs and um yeah listening to your to your songs like make us whole again it's 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 a real it's really clear how the spiritual need of a lot of people are being attended to through the lyricism of the track because it, it, it speaks from a different perspective and now it all makes sense When, when I first heard it, I was like, there, there is so much depth here, but I can't even begin to, to understand it be, because I, I, I don't know where it comes from, yet it speaks to me so clearly. And uh, if you see the, the reaction video, I think I cry. I think I, I become really <laughs> emotional because I, I couldn't physically understand what, what it was happening, but it wasn't physical. It was something that goes through the physical body, you know, and... Now, now that you 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 are so kind to share your story with us, I, everything makes so much more sense, you know. When you got emotional, I got emotional too because ah. yours was the first one that I watched. It was sent to me, and they said, "Watch this." And I, <laughs> you know, but these songs don't come. I mean, they're they're just not they're not just expressions of my uh, of what I'm feeling. Mm. Um, these have gone through prayer and all, and it's like, Lord, just guide me if you're going to use me use me now and speak through me and make people know that like it was with me when he yeah. said oh i'm here again too make them know that through this song and so i believe that when you reacted even if you didn't know the background it wasn't really me speaking it was already you know it's just a spiritual connection that he was saying hey you know for whatever's going on in in your hometown and where whatever's going on in london i'm here Uh, it's it's so very prevalent. It's you, so um, very prevalent. How how, how do you uh, keep yourself kind of like uh, grounded and, and and such a maybe it's spiritual alignment? Do you, do you meditate? Do you is is it through the form of prayer? Um, uh, what what kind of what kind of habits? And I, and I think maybe sometimes uh, you know through through maybe you sharing what you do. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people can also find maybe habits that they can make yeah. and 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 uh, discover or, or yeah. dip their toes in. You know. I um I am not I want to make people know that uh, I'm not like someone you say that has his halo on all the time, <laughs> okay? Because like any light bulb, it does go off every once in a while. And it has to be fixed and replaced and repaired. So I'm not I'm far from perfect. But um, one thing I can say is that again I have good people around me that check on me, that that do pray with me, that challenge me. You know, where are you going to go now? What are you going to do now? Where, where do you think God's telling you to go and all? And I'm just thankful that the God I serve is a God who takes all my questions and he doesn't look down on me. So when I go, I've been working on this song for a year. Are you even sure you want this song to come out? I have, no, I can't finish it. Look, I can't finish it. I have so many pages. I, yeah, I know, I know. I have to wait for you. And I know you want, you have your will and all, but can you just, Can you help me be patient enough to wait on you? Because I feel that timing is now, but his timing always goes against the grain. Yeah. Okay. So I have a very simple, yet I must say, deep relationship with him. I read and I have a hard time reading because I'm not a reader. So what I do is I go online and I listen. I listen. Nice. Audiobooks. Yeah. Okay? I like listening to music. I don't read music. <laughs> I, want, I want people to hear my music yep. not read my music so i'd rather listen yeah in fact i have cer certain podcasts that i may release i may or may not <laughs> but these are two minute biblical stories Gosh. two minutes but the music behind is a scored version of take me out of the dark there's nice. one that's going to be make us whole again but it's 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 like a movie thing but it's all audio all right. you know they say medical I mean, the doctors say that when a person is close to death, the last sense that goes is the sense of hearing. Right. Okay. That's what I heard. Um, so I feel everything that I do audibly, it's got to be clear enough for people to hear, even if they're at that point already, okay. when they're about to go, because 
I just feel that it's quite important to maximize what I have now mm-hmm. for this time. That people are stuck at home, at least here in the Philippines, okay? Mm. They're stuck at home. When they're out, they can't even come close to each other. And somehow, social distancing has somehow been equated to emotional distancing. Yeah, yeah. Yes, so, I agree. We're socially distant, so we tend not to reach out to the people we don't we no longer see. So that's how I keep myself on track. Right. But I'm not perfect because that track sometimes kind of has other ways to go. And like, oh, yeah, yeah. Let's try going that way. Oh, yeah. let's try that way. And then I realize it's not the right way. So I just come right back to where I'm supposed to be. As I am. I'm not trying to pretend, you know, I come before God and say, hey, I'm not like that. I'm more of like... Yeah, you know, you know, but can I just, can I just, you know, okay, so I just want to be here with you right now and just do what you must. I have a song, which I actually have on video. It's called Break Me. Okay. And it's it's a scary, scary request, but the the chorus part is something that goes, um, make me and take me. Can you find me in the world I've chosen and never let me go? Hold me and mold me. And if there's no other way to make me whole, then go ahead and break me. But then remake me. Right. Nothing on, I won't give up because I know you won't give up on me. So that's very that profound. Is, yeah. I mean, that's, but see, if people want to know me without really knowing me, you know how they say those things now? Yeah. yeah. Tell me that you're this without telling me. All you, have to do, <laughs> you, know how, you know how it is, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, so the trend, yes. If you want to know me without knowing me, um, listen to my music, my yes. inspirational songs. You'll see me in every song because mm. those are not based on experiences that others have gone through. They're based on my experiences. And somebody told me that. And well, so I, I, I also think... Uh, sorry, guys, sorry. Uh, okay. I, I, I also think um, that kind of like approach, you know, break me and mold me and, and, uh, and or, or, you know, don't let me go. And I think also faith or, or having some sort of spiritual um, alignment um, it creates some sort of sense of humility because it, it's this understanding that whatever you think is going on here and, and gift you have or reality or difficulty you may be going through, um, that there, there's a lot more at play and you're actually at, at the mercy of many forces. And, and you, you shouldn't also be afraid to ask or, or to repent or to, or to, yeah. uh, um, you know, speak as if he's, he is a, yeah, here with you as as you create or as you go through through difficulties, you know. Yeah, I it's 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 a constant connection I long to have. It's just that, like I said, my my halo goes off. I I go <laughs> off in other directions too. And the thing is, every morning I was oh, I'm I'm often reminded that in every morning before the sun rises, he's already there. So yeah. yeah. Just <laughs> you know, and, when they, and when when they when people say come close to me, it's it's more of the opposite. It's you just walk up to him as you are. You don't need to. Yeah. I have a song actually called As You Are. You know, you don't need to be a hero or a superstar. You there you go. As you are. As you are. I was going to say that you, um, we saw a video of Morissette uh, do, uh, could, you, could you be Messiah? Could you be Messiah? Messiah? I, she, I yeah. think she just released it a, a few days ago. Yes. Few, yeah. um, and it, it, I saw in the, in the credits that you, co- you wrote it. You, that, that's your song. Composed you composed it. it right? That was supposed to be a musical. I was, I was offered Yes, to... we called it. We I called it. We, <laughs> call, we were like, why is this so theatrical, a musical? And yeah, by the way, I've got a question to ask you. That? Yeah, but go on. Yeah, uh, I was supposed to write all the songs for the musical. And the, and the songwriter, his name is Freddie Santos. Okay. Um, Freddie came up to me one time and said, Gary, I have an offer for you. Would you, you know, I, I'm really thinking that you can be a part of this musical, but I want you to write all the songs. Okay. And at that time, I was thinking too much of my career. So I said, wow. you know, Freddie, I, uh, I, maybe I can write one or two, but I can't. And besides, my keyboard is busted, so I, I, <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah, I had, I think, the key of D or something like that. That would just, it had no velocity. So every time you pressed it, it's, mm, it's right, right, always right. loud. It's oh, at its loud, loudest loud. velocity every time, no matter how light you pressed it. So I said, it's probably not God's will. Okay. But then okay. about a week went by, and I was in my in-law's place, and I started playing on the, on the piano. They had an old antique piano, and I was playing, and my wife came up because she knew 
that Freddie wanted me to be part of this musical. <laughs> he goes, oh, that sounds nice, Gary. What what are you working on? And I said, oh, I just feel like I, I, I want to write some music. And she goes, maybe I can ask Freddie to go to the house. And, you know, I said, yeah, yeah, go ahead and call sure. him. <laughs> call him. He, com- he comes to the house. And it's like, he just gives me the lyrics. And I put it in front of me. And I said, okay, let's see what we can do. How do you, how do you want this? And he told me the story. Okay. He said, okay, this, the person who's going to sing it is... You know, it's a story of Christ and it's one of the servants in the palace and he's hearing all of these things about the Lord and he's so confused because the soldiers are saying something and but the others who are touched are saying something else about this Lord. So who could he be? And that's what the story is about. Right. So I yeah, sat there and I said, awesome. okay, so how about this? You know, I played a little bit of the intro and I go, could you be healer? To a heart that's been wounded, and it and I looked at the back and I said, "You like that?" And there was Freddie. Just <laughs> yeah. Go on. We finished at five a.m. on that Ooh. song. Now this is way back in the eighties. Okay, I recorded it on cassette, Whoa. and I was dropping him home. The sun was out, and we just kept rewinding and playing it again and again. And I looked at him and I said, "What's going on here? Done? What are you starting?" <laughs> I I didn't end up writing all the songs, okay. you know, but um. I, I did quite a few and I was able to arrange them. You know, but, the, but the musical did go ahead. Yeah, the musical did go ahead. It's called First Name. First and name. they're actually thinking of restaging the whole oh, thing. Nice. I, yeah, mm. I think that should go ahead because the first time I heard it, uh, well, I only heard the f- first few chord progressions in the, mm. in the intro as she opens up uh, could you be healer? Uh, yeah. th- that that beginning part, I heard it and I was like, wait a second, this is Stephen Schwartz, like <laughs> Prince of Egypt type of style. I- like honestly, and then as the song developed, it, it like it grows and it changes mm-hmm. and he's so emotional and he's so invested, and it's obviously piece, her man. her performance absolutely uh, stunning, it, yeah. stunning yeah. to the you know it's, it's of it. she couldn't come here to the studio to do uh, it, so I sent her you know, a mixed, a rough mix of the thing. And then we were working, that's how we were working together. I was listening okay. to her and I said, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Morissette, can you, can you do it like this instead? But what I did tell Morissette was, I said, Mori, people know you can sing. They've heard you sing, but I don't want them to hear you sing. I want them to hear your heart. Mm. Really what I want, okay? Mm. So when I was arranging it here, right here, you know, all of the string patches and all. Now again, I don't know chords. I don't know anything. <laughs> I had to do transposing all of these things, and then the strings and all. I went to some tutorials as to how to orchestrate things, so it won't sound. I mean, I'm not an expert in it, but it was enough to to bring out what I thought was meant to be heard. And when she sang it, and I sat here mixing the whole thing, I was like, oh wow. It's, it's new life to something I've done. And it felt good that it didn't have to be me on the front. Oh, wow. Right. I was just there behind saying, you know what? Go take this because I know it's meant to be heard again with this kind of fresh approach, with yeah. this kind of emotion. It, it was, it was very, it. yeah, she really killed it. I think it was very refreshing that, that the uh, vocal choices made throughout the whole uh, uh, pattern of the of the song itself. It, I love that it was lifted, but it wasn't belted. It was really nice. It was really nicely positioned, but it was so resonant. So it felt very vulnerable, you know? It felt very like a true plea for, to be heard. And um, it, it really touched me in, in a completely different way. But I still think you should, uh, you should consider doing like a, like a collaboration with Maury yeah, yeah. of a remix you know <laughs> yeah be fun I'll be good it may, it may just happen it may oh, just, let's you, go you, you've seen the video yeah you've seen the like the final the final uh, the yeah. final cut of everything yeah we saw it yesterday it was bloody it was amazing it was I know incredible. I know and, and I've they, seen also the reactions of the others and it really brings tears to my eyes because you know you I guess maybe for some people they might go into oh I wish that I wish I should have done this for me you know then I would have but that never entered my head you know it was it was like you know I'm, 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 I'm a part of something i'm not the headline but i'm a part of something and it feels it feels good and it makes me look forward to doing more of these things for yes. others who deserve what i've been given and maybe even more in the past 38 years you know, mori is, is relatively new okay well, she's, she's, been she's around. the new generation right new, yeah new generation so go you know here 
go and 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 have and not just have fun, but go and and savor. You know the moment. You know, never mind. You don't have my name need not be mentioned. You know, I I I don't want to tell go around people go around and telling people. Oh, by the way, you know, I'm the one who produced it. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I let, just just let Morissette take it and bring it to wherever it needs to go. It can become like I'm a just, bounce pad for them to jump higher, you know, kind of thing. And I'm just honored. I'm just honored that I was chosen to write the melody of the song. Yeah. I didn't write the lyrics, but I was chosen to write the melody of the song to be the original singer of the song. But that's what a song is, you know. Yeah. It's yeah. meant to continue in ways that we never really expect. So now Maury has it and I'm really happy that she's the one who has it. Well, we we, we were we were actually talking about that um with with Jay, JR and uh, we we were just discussing like um you know this new generation of of artists especially in the Philippines which is they're super exciting all of them man like Bugoy yeah. obviously uh, uh, you know Inigo, Kiana I think is very Kiana, exciting. Yeah, I know. Um obviously Mori is very exciting. Uh, Michael, you have KC. KC of very... oh, KC is scary, oh. dude. Like uh, yeah. KC is scary. <laughs> she Actually, is. She's I think she's might be my favorite artist. I think we've discovered in the last year and a half. Yeah. Absolutely. That that lady it's I, I think she's dangerous, dude. Like, you know what I mean? She's world, world she's domination. A small package with a huge voice. Everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she's got everything. So the, this this new generation of of uh, artists who obviously have you guys, you know, the Martins, uh, 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 Garys, you, uh, Jaya's, uh, Jaya's yeah. the the mm-hmm. obviously Regines, they have you guys as the yeah, yeah Martin, yeah, Martin, Martin, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. They have you guys as as the you know, like they're idols. You, they heard you guys when you when they were little, you know? And the, and and what 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 does that kind of like um I don't know, I guess the question is what does that feel like to have all these like new upcoming singers? And then we spoke to Bugoy and he's like, dude, when I heard Gary on the radio, Bugoy drilling his when, like, when I heard Gary on, on the radio, I was like, holy mo, I want to be like him. And then <laughs> and then yeah, and, and you know, when he heard JR in the radio for the first time, he's like, I want to be like him. And you know, yeah. you, you have all these Darren Spanto who's very young and you know, all these new kids that that I mean they're kids, but they're my age. <laughs> um and it, and it's so like uh, it's so exciting for the Philippines, this kind of new wave. So where where do you kind of see the, the this new generation going? You know, like 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 I always tell even the people who handle them now, I'm always telling them, look, these artists are more than just great. Okay, they're already creating an impact. They need the right songs, mm-hmm. okay? And they don't need to sound like what's already out there, mm. okay? They just need to sound like who they really are. And it will happen in time that one will come out there and all because there are many good singers here in the Philippines, but they don't have original music. They're doing covers, mm-hmm. specially arranged for them. Yeah. So when they go abroad, let's say to the US where the original artists originate, you know, from... Yep. You have people saying, yeah, but we've heard that already here. We have this person here and we have this person doing that same piece. But when they hear original music, mm. even if it's in Tagalog, it's going to create it's, an impact. Yeah, yeah, it's I, going I, to be it. It's and going I, to I think it. It, right now in this new uh, era of, of uh, social media and the online world and online marketing and whatever, language is no longer a barrier. Right, Correct. so you can you can literally listen to and and it's trend it trends it goes viral and you could hear it in, in all types of uh, social media platforms and it doesn't matter what language is it is yeah. or where it's from it, if it resonates with an audience it will resonate with a different audience from a different part of the world and yeah. and it's just finding that genuinity that is it's able to touch a lot of people at the same time well, right? and, and brother look, look at look at what korea has been able to do amazing yeah, I was with, about, you know with, i was about to say that k-pop yeah. i mean i have there are young people over here who you know come up with videos online and they're singing in korean do they yeah. understand what's being said no. i doubt it no, 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 they, no, right. it. You know, they're just they're just going yeah. with it so yeah you're right you know it's language should no longer be a yeah. barrier yeah, of I course, you wanna you wanna sing a song that most will understand. But every once in a while, you put your identity in there. Then you give people the entire package. Yes. That's right. You know? I agree. I yes. agree. I also think that um, what's very uh, 
unique about the Philippines and the entertainment industry of in, in the Philippines is that the backup and like community idea of the whole industry is very strong. Everyone collaborates with each other. Yes, right? and yeah. you get and you get like once you're in, you you have this whole network of people that are in the industry that have been in the industry and they all work together they all feed off of each other and i believe that's why you get such consistent artists that continuously keep growing in their own uh, making of their own music composing writing lyrics in a different way because they've got this huge network that they can access I, I, you know, I, I don't see that often. I mean, you have you have unicorns like the Spanish community in, in the inter entertainment industry. They're very close together. They really yeah. understand that they bounce off of each other. But apart from that, you don't really get that family community aspect to it. And I respect that from you guys so much. Honestly, it's, it's so refreshing to hear you that's such a, an important, imminent figure in the industry who helps and is willing to give and and create with the new generation and the generation that came before. And and everybody is just part of this whole thing. And that is so fantastic. In the How, Philippines has, has the opportunity to do something special. Man. Yes, really. they really do. This yeah. next few years. I think that especially at a time like this where everybody's mm -hmm. online, you mm. know, I mean, more now than ever before because of everything that's been happening. So... Yeah, you know, I, I, I agree with you. Um, there was one time I was in, uh, I don't know if it was in Kuala Lumpur or Malaysia, and I had just finished my rehearsal. Okay. And I was walking uh, on the underground tunnel to get back to the dressing room with a young Vietnamese artist. And when she, sound, when she did her sound check, I didn't know her song at all. But there was something about her performance that was like, oh, I've never heard this kind of music before. So we were walking <laughs> back and I said, excuse me, uh, uh, you were from, and she goes, oh, I'm, I'm from Vietnam. Nice. And I said, you know, your, your music was, was amazing. Oh, thank you. Where are you from? I said, well, <laughs> I'm from the Philippines. And she stops. And then she speaks in her own language to her assistant or her manager. It, I don't know what she was saying. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, did I, did I do that? And she goes, no, uh, it, it's a known fact that the Philippines is like the breadbasket of talent in Asia. It's yeah, true. <laughs> this, this was more than 10 years ago. <laughs> you know, when, when she said that, and I was like, well, thank you very much. I just need to make you know that I really enjoyed what you did and I encourage you to continue. And, you know, she was like maybe in her early 20s, maybe 21, 22, you know, but she was very small and all. And I was really impressed with what I heard. But then to hear that from her and her reaction, we're walking like this. And then she goes, oh. whoa. And I said, no, I, I was just telling them that you know what the Philippines was, and it was nice because it was like a confirmation. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, without being proud and showing the world, hey, you know, this is what we got. <laughs> I remember, I remember also. Um, no, it it was another artist that came to Manila. Uh, he was an African American artist, you know, okay. R and B. Nice. So he comes to Manila. And he says, man, are you guys like, you guys are supposed to be in the U.S. This is the kind of crowd we need back there. <laughs> I and totally I like, agree. And, and, and I, I could understand, you know, and, but I did tell the artist, I said, when you do come out, make sure you speak a little bit because once you do, you make Love a you. connection that yeah. even if they don't understand your music, you made an effort to reach out to them with more than just your music. That's right. I, I, think, I think also that... Um, that communication between um, audience, fan base, and, and artists, it, it's so pinnacle. It's, it's something that shouldn't be overlooked, right? That communication between your fan base, the people that have invested a lot of their time to listen to your own creations, it, it, that, that should be an open line of communication always, right? And this new era of social media has broadened that opportunity, right? Oh, so, yes. so you are able to personally get to know the people that follow you for what you like, for, mm. for what you are making. And yeah. that is something really important to emphasize. And I think, I think um, I would love to, obviously you already touched up on it, but I would love to see what, 
what is it like when once the whole social media started what was it like for you to oh you got the opportunity to talk personally with these people how, how did it feel well, like okay let, let me take you back in time when <laughs> yes, let's go. there was no such thing i mean facebook wasn't even around yet okay but there was something i think called multiply Oh. Okay, this is a yes. I no idea. Never mind. You, you don't need. Yeah, that's fine. You don't need to <laughs> go back there. But it was back in time. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> I remember. I remember, fans would send me, you know, like this much, this long a note, you know, a message, okay. and I would reply with this much. It just felt like, oh, you know, oh, you know, life is like this and life is like that, and they would respond, and nice. it felt so good to do that. But then the numbers started rising and yeah. to spend time in these things was taking, you know, it's too much. And yeah. then yeah. it was emotionally draining because they were really opening up now about, you know, my father's not doing well mm -hmm. and all. And then there are some, and I don't look down on these people, but there are some who, who needed financial help. You know, it got to that point and you have to be mm -hmm. careful because anybody can post as someone who needs financial help. Yeah. Yeah. But I have a team now that, that works on these things. But when the whole social media thing started, I'm a late bloomer, okay? When it comes to YouTube, I always <laughs> felt, you know, if my songs are being played on Spotify, I'm okay. And we've got the concerts that we can show that I'm okay. But then my sons were saying, no, dad, you have to put out something that that's just you, you know, that people don't, would not normally see yeah, even yeah. if it's mm -hmm. you just in your studio and all and just just do something that with the songs you already have and so when i did take me out of the dark that was the first one that i released last year wow. uh, i just said you know what i i was not fixed up and all i just brushed my hair back like this and i <laughs> sat there and i said you know let's just just take me put the camera there if i'm a silhouette never mind they don't have to see my face it's not about my face it's about the song yeah back played it recorded it and that's what came out and then Fantastic. it generated so much no so it was an eye-opener for me you know only last year did i say okay let me let me let me really see what i can do not because of the numbers and what i can earn out of it but because of the numbers of how many i can actually reach yeah yeah mm, absolutely you know? yeah yeah so, yeah I and you feel so personal right i'm sure you've experienced it now like it's so oddly Personal. personal like every time every time you know it says like two hundred thousand views but it's like one like that's 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 actually two hundred thousand people that actually watched the video that actively yeah. went and clicked on the video and that have two hundred thousand different stories two hundred thousand different upbringings two hundred thousand different families to have try and get two hundred thousand people to watch your concert yeah this live. Yeah, it's possible yeah, this is one not. song yeah. and you have two hundred thousand people well i think take me out now is like it's like two point something million. Holy yeah. moly, guys! You have two million people. What? I'm yeah. Like, okay. But again, I want I want everyone out there to know that that's my argument with my team sometimes because you know, <laughs> of course they want numbers and all, and I and I understand that. But I'm more of, please don't make me think of numbers. Make yeah. me just think of what my what my intention is, what my calling is, and that's what I need to fulfill. And honestly, I'll be as open as saying some of my friends come up to me and say, okay, Gary, you know, um, our company wants to have a, like a private party, you know, uh, this was before, okay. okay. Like before the COVID happened, we, you know, we have a, maybe, a, maybe about 200, 300 people want to watch you in our company anniversary and all, how much are you, how much will you cost? And I always tell them, I don't know anything about that. I don't <laughs> think about that. Because once I do, yeah. can you imagine me saying, that's it? That's all I'm going to get. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, well, well, but I, Gary, we wanted to hear your song, this and that. Yeah, but I'm not getting enough. So I, you know, I can, I can't, I can't well, ever. You're lucky to have a team that actually values uh, your, your work and, and, and the effort yeah. that it, it actually requires to make music. Because I think that's what the problem with artists is in, in general, all around the world. You get artists are artists. They become people invested in the making and creating of things, right? So we shouldn't worry about the physical outcome of it. And that's the reason why, like, we have a saying back in Venezuela, like, if you want to be a musician, be prepared to starve, <laughs> right? So like, be ready to starve because, because I think musicians and, and creators kind of lose perspective of how much their effort is actually worth. 
and because music and and creating is so uh, it's such a yeah it's such an abstract concept like how can you measure how much your effort and the making of something it's really worth like uh, yeah. it, it it is a very iffy thing so you know um i find peace of mind when i know that artists like you have a very good team that are yeah. looking out for the well-being of the artist so the artist can totally become engulfed in the making and and not what actually represents physically anymore you know and and you know some people might actually say yeah it's easy for you to say gary because <laughs> you've been in it for 38 years now yeah but if i didn't have a good team i wouldn't have been around for this mm -hmm. long. i totally agree yes. with that i would encourage you know that you you guys get a good team and then always have an open heart an open heart and an open mind your your ideas may not always work you yeah. have enough right. room to hear what the others have to say of course mm. it's going to depend on what you really want to put out there but it just helps when you are able to have that openness and that room for you know other ideas other creative juices that can flow from other people Absolutely. you know we we um so, something that i i i enjoyed talking to to kiana about was that kind of how family and business comes Works. together you know mm -hmm. like when when we were kids we would be in, in music 24 seven and, and we toured for a really long time for about really seven, nine years. When I was a kid, you know, three to now I was 11. And it, it's a bizarre time in your life. You know, you're basically, a kid. I'm a kid. I don't understand what money is. I don't understand. I just like toys, girls and superheroes. <laughs> That's all I liked, you know? So, it, it, and then ballet was in a more peculiar scenario because you were six to 15 so I was like 15 years right ago, so yeah. you were in a more complicated world you're a teenager now you know so mm -hmm. and one of the things that i think we were very lucky to is to have our family be our agents be our uh, managers mm -hmm. be uh, the publicists the people that were behind it the producers be everything i right, know yeah. right, right. and and it, it went i think because we were kids it wasn't very difficult the dynamic it was just we do what mom and dad says you know mm -hmm. that that's what it is and you can truly trust what mom and dad say because mm -hmm. they're mom and dad and, and one of the things that we, we saw happen to a lot of our friends is when they grew, so when they went 11, 12, up to 21 years old, and now they're artists full-time and they're also adults, uh, sometimes I think the best thing is to have family together and be part of your team. But what, you, what we noticed was that you start going more independent, you know, because you become an adult, right? And, and you became a parent while in the business, you know? <laughs> So what, what was kind of like that experience like, and then also what it's like now having three gifted artists at home, you know, and, and you know, their journey, obviously them having you as a, as a guide, but what is that, you know, what is that like to, to be a parent in the industry and then also to guide them as they want to become artists? Okay. <laughs> um, Complex question, I know, but. Once upon a time in a galaxy far away. <laughs> um, I entered the industry and it was quite scandalous, actually, when I entered because I was 18 years old. Oh, wow. And people were, you know, Gary Valenciano. And it was me, Martin, and another guy. Uh, his name was Raymond Lauchenko. Unfortunately, he doesn't have videos out and all. But uh -huh. we were the three often pitted against each other. But then um, I was a young boy and I had a beautiful girlfriend who ended up becoming my wife. But before she became my wife, she got pregnant. Oh. So now, the it was splattered. Yeah, it was everywhere. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who will the unwed father be? And it oh. was Martin, myself, and Raymond. What? And it was like you know, yeah, it was it was tough. <laughs> Holy but man. I ended up I ended up entering the industry, and you know what I'll never forget it was the very first concert, the very first huge concert I had. I sat down two weeks before that concert. I sat down with the media uh -huh. press conference let's go press conference and before that i had a meeting with my team my okay. sister uh my two sisters were there and the management team was there with me and they were saying okay gary they were thinking of ways of how i, I should divert or or kind of cover up for the fact that my girlfriend who is angeli my wife got pregnant Okay. And they were all talking, no, 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 maybe she, she can fly to the U.S. And anyway, Gary has family there and she can have the baby there. And all, or to Australia, she has family there too. So, and I was like, sit, you know, just sitting down and thinking. And finally, I was asked, wait, wait, why don't we ask Gary? What he's <laughs> you know, we've been talking. Why don't we ask Gary what he's going to tell the media? 
And I just told them, I said, you know, if they ask about the baby, I'll just say, yeah, it's true. Because someday when that kid grows up, I don't want him to think, him or her to think that I hid, I tried to hide, you know, the truth of that. Why, why, was I ashamed? Was, was it a mistake? And so when I said, yes, it's true, because that was the first question asked, I sat down like this and there was press <laughs> media in front of me. Okay, Gary, we want to know, is it true? Yeah. And I just said, yeah, it's true. Oh, everybody's right. writing. About it. <laughs> oh, and I knew, I knew it was gonna come out, and everything was. Gonna, people were gonna say things. And I just said, "Oh, by the way, on April 13th, that's Friday the 13th. Oh, I have a concert. It's called A Live, and it's at the Araneta Coliseum. So just in case you know, you might want to watch it. You know, yeah. But uh, so, how do you feel? You know, your fans are going to be uh, so disappointed and all, and this and that. But I had already made up my mind that if nobody came to that concert, that's my sign. Then I could leave for the U.S. Okay. I Probably. see. But if there were people, ah, that means, wait a minute. People still cared. So much was said about it. Tabloid after tabloid, you know, <laughs> what's going to be the concert? Oh, he's not going to make it. Oh, there's a so-and-so and so. On the day of the concert, I came, okay, here, this is the, this is the, the Coliseum, okay? The stage was here. Yeah. I came from the top from the bleacher area. There was a ramp that came down like this. That's where nice. they came from. Awesome. But they had to shut the lights and I had to walk up there, passing some of the audience, you know, as I went up there. When they shut the lights, you know how it is in concerts, they shut yeah. the lights and it's like, ah. This one was, they shut the lights and you nobody reacted. It was like, oh. <laughs> I, for me, there were people who came to watch because they were saying, who's this Gary Valenciano? That it wasn't even Gary V yet. Yeah. Who's this guy? Oh, let's go and see him. You know, if they're talking about him, then that means there must be something worth seeing. Let's go and see him. So I walked up like this. But before I even walked up, I said a prayer backstage with the team. And I said, Lord, um, this is it. This is the night. And um, at that time, I didn't have any of this so-called relationship with God just sure. yet. But, you know, it was my first big concert. This was the defining moment. Where am I going to stay or go? And after I prayed, my sister Gina comes in and she's crying. <laughs> and I say, Gina, what's, what's the problem? And she looked at me. She goes, we're sold out. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm walking up and I could hear people, oh, it's Gary Valenciano. It, but there's no screaming because everybody was more like curious. Yeah. And right. the opening song was a, was a cover of a song called Brand New Day. So I came from the top and I, when the when the music began, that's when I heard it. <laughs> so I came down and in my opening number, I'm crying already. Uh, like, this is a reason to. I mean, it's like, and and then that's and I stayed. That became the decision maker, and I realized I have to go on. Yeah, nice. and so this we just continued and we continued and we continued, and now it's 38 years later. And, oh, that's, yeah. I mean, what a journey! Oh, right? What a moment! I think that I remember when. When my wife finally gave birth to Paolo, my eldest son, I wanted to hold him and oh. show him to the very same press people and say, look, you've said so much about me. There's only one thing I can say. Do you have anything like this? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is mine. And you can say whatever you want to say, but I have my son. And I wanted a boy. Nice. And, and Paolo was born. Now he directs some of my live concerts. He That's does the great. concerts of Regine Velasquez. Yeah. Wow. I mean, he's like big, you know, things that he's into. He's one of the best. I'm saying this. I'm careful to say it because I'm his dad. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm saying what I've heard from other people also, which oh. aligns with what I feel. Where he Gary, is as your father, one you of have the best. All the right to brag about your son, mate. <laughs> okay. In that case, <laughs> he is for me the best live events director there is in the Philippines today. When I say live events, it's not just concerts. It's product launches, it's festivals, mm -hmm. it's this and that. It's he gets so immersed in it, okay, that I feel that's the feedback I get from people. Gary, I work with your son. He's so, he's amazing. Everybody's rattling, everybody's arguing with each other and he's just calm and he just says what needs to be done. And then when it's out and when it's, when it's finally executed, Gary, there's nobody like him. And I'm like, oh, thank you. I'll let him know. I'll let him know. <laughs> <laughs> now, with regard to when they were growing up, 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. There was one thing I told my three children, which again, to all the parents out there who have found success in the field of medicine or music or architecture or engineering, I told my children this, which my eldest son, Paolo, said, Dad, I'm so happy you actually said that to us because it really helped me. It's very hard for children to fill up the shoes of mm-hmm. a parent who has become very popular. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay? Maybe if he was popular for five years, six years, then okay, he can fill up those shoes. But it's been 38 years. So I told my children, look, you are a Valenciano, but I'm never going to expect you to be like me. You don't have to sing like me, talk like me, walk like me, dress up like me. You fly on your own set of wings. Right now, I am flying with you. Actually, I'm flying. Yeah, I'm flying with you. But I can't always fly for you. So you're going to have to spread your own set of wings and fly. And if it, your wings should take you to other skies, <laughs> I'll be watching you from a distance or I'll fly with you. But I cannot fly for you. I want you to spread your wings and fly. So with Kiana last year, she was supposed to be a part of the South by Southwest music festival, which is the biggest thing for her. But that didn't push through because of COVID. Yeah. But that means they've heard of her. And there's an opportunity for her to go back again, maybe, you know, when all of these things die down and people can get together with that amount of people. Gabrielle today, Gabriel is into video productions. It's a company called Glitch, where he's opening it up for people who can't afford the Huge very expensive productions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he wants to help these people out and then create something that looks like that. That uh, looks like sense. something that was well Amazing. spent on. Paolo struggling now because there are no live events yeah i was thinking about that yeah but he has it you know and now he's actually he actually did an event online now so that's where his job is taking him you know but his lifeline is really live events so i can't wait for the moment (laughs) that it actually comes back because he's he's going to be wanted he's going to be oh definitely hired you know left and right well, it also is the demand of people. I think the minute that everything goes yeah. back to normal, people are going to be hungry to socialize, to be part of something, to feel like they're part of the, the life stages again, the festivals, anything that relates to being one again, like community, that, that thing. Yeah, I think, we're, I think we're slowly getting there. Like uh, last week, the UFC, you know, I don't know if you watch the UFC, Gary. They, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. They put out their first live event, yeah. world, you know, live sport event at full capacity, 15,000 people in Jacksonville, right? So I think it was 16,000. And now, you know, That's two madness. weeks from now, they're going 17,000 again. That's madness. That's madness. Uh, so um, I think even the NBA, they're starting to bring fans into the games. It's just yeah, that the yeah. fans themselves are like, uh, wait, uh, maybe not yet. But yeah, there yeah. are. They're starting to fill up little by little. Yeah. Yeah. Here, I'm, here, really hoping, I'm really hoping that, you know, it happens again soon because I have an offer to go back to the U.S. in September. Nice. So to, exciting, you know, to go on tour, and I'm like, Ooh, okay, let's see. <laughs> I think, to be honest, Gary, I think like September in the US, yeah, I think that they're the it's definitely gonna be different. Like, the landscape's gonna be different from here, like summer to September. We're, we're re- I, it, it wouldn't be hopeful thinking to say that, yeah, you most likely are gonna be touring probably in oh. September. Yeah. Well, I, I hope everything aligns for you and like the, everything goes back to the way it should be. And the way that you want it to be. Uh, I mean, this has been incredibly inspirational. I don't, I don't even get to understand what, what just happened. And I, I, I would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart personally for sharing so much with us and, you know, creating another source of inspiration for myself. And, and I know the people here right now are just as inspired. It, it's, um, it's a true honor. So thank Probably you so just, much. Just uh, any, anything you'd like to promote, anything you'd like to yeah, share? Yeah, I... Well, I have some things here. Uh, you can actually follow me on, on YouTube, on, Spotify, <laughs> uh, on Facebook and Instagram. It's just Gary Valenciano. And on Twitter, it's Gary Valenciano 1. Okay, now pe- some people call me Gary Valenciano. Some people call me Gary Valenciano. But uh-huh. then I'm just Gary V to most. But on my accounts, it's always Gary Valenciano. Okay. Um, and then, well, make us whole again. Because of these two over here, they've kind of been able to make it go out there even more uh it's out on all my online music platforms and then there's a show called asap or asap natinto it means the show asap stands for all-star all-star sunday afternoon party 
that's a bunch of artists. We all come together for a regular Sunday show at noontime. Uh, and it's that's online too. It's oh, nice. Casa, yeah. Not yeah. Until, you know, so we're there. You're, you're a host there, aren't you? Sometimes. Are you like a host there? Yes, I am. Yeah, I'm, yeah. A, I'm one of the main hosts, you know. I'm one of the seniors there. Nice. And um, it feels good to be with all the younger artists like Darren. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and Morissette is there also. There are many other artists also that uh, I think and I believe are going to shine sometime very soon. And then I'm part of a show called Your Face Sounds Familiar. I know it sounds funny, right? Your oh, well, we've familiar. seen it. We've seen some of the, the TNT lads. Uh, oh, some of the TNT yes, boys. Yes. Uh, the TNT yes. boys. There's another contestant there that's present now. Her name is Clarice de Guzman. Yes, I She's with, amazing too. Is that, is that the little blondie? No, no, no. Oh. Clarice de Guzman, we've seen her uh, collaborate with other artists. I'll show you later yes. just to refresh your memory. But yeah. yes, absolutely insanity. That show is hilarious. I love it. <laughs> it's crazy. It's great. You know, we're there. It's great. And it's like, what? We don't have an audience, but we get a kick out of laughing at each other. <laughs> Definitely. Each other. It's amazing. They, they, it takes time to put that makeup on and to stay in that makeup throughout the day. You know, it's yeah. not easy. But amazing well, artists. Well, you know, people forget how long it actually takes to be on TV, like how long the, sh- the, the, the hours yeah. of shooting actually require. So you, you might be there. Uh, people might see you just for the Sunday afternoon show, but you're there probably every day yes. that week filming several shows and for amount of crazy amount of hours. So you're it's right. uh, I appreciate your hard work <laughs> <laughs> but, for the sake know, speaking of about Speaking about shooting videos, I'm actually going to shoot a video I don't know if it's going to be here or outside, but I'm doing a new song and it's oh, a nice. new collaboration with Leia Salonga. Oh, no wow. way. Yeah, it's, it's been recorded already. Oh, so yes. we're shooting the video soon and it has a lot to do with heroes. Oh, so nice. it's, another, it's an inspirational song, but it's an honor to have done it. It's actually there. It's on the track now, but <laughs> I have to, you know, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, let you guys we'll hear it at the right time. But um, yeah, uh, so I'll be doing that. You can watch out for it. It's coming out soon. Well, know. if you'd like to come back and talk about it anytime soon, you're more than welcome. This is your house. And uh, yeah, so yeah. Well when it releases, uh, Gary, and we'll absolutely check it out. Yeah. All, yeah. all our support, man. Absolutely. 100%. Thank you so very much. You know, oh, I, I, I really, really enjoyed this time. Tonight. <laughs> thank you for just allowing me to speak. I don't know how much is going to be edited. Nothing, none. Nothing. nothing. Everything goes Seriously? Out like, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a podcast, man. Did you say man. anything wrong? Did, did, did I miss it? <laughs> <laughs> I might have said something wrong, no? Damn, I mean, man. Okay. So you did cool. fine. Everything was yeah. honestly. I, every single part of this podcast is such a gem. Honestly, it's a jewel. I Anyone think, to listen, uh-huh. listening to this? What was it? I think we did a. I think one we did. Yeah, we did one with Jay, uh, and and he was like, I think two hours long, Jr. Yeah. And he was like, Dude, I can't believe it was two hours. And we were like, <laughs> Dude, if you, if you if you see some other podcasts like the Joe Rogan podcast, oh my God. that uh-huh. guy goes like for four hours. He's crazy. Seriously. Seriously. Yeah, but because it's like this conversation, right? So you're not really pushing like, oh, there's a set of questions or anything. So it feels like yeah, you're just yeah. conversing and the conversation yeah. just flows for however long. You know, <laughs> the idea came from Gary, like in, in when we did a lot of TV interviews, mm-hmm. I think my biggest pet peeve was what I thought were the best bits. They would always take them out. Yeah. And, oh, then, oh, yeah. I and, I, and I would want to choke him. I mean, I do, in what are you 38 doing? years of my being in the industry, it's happened oh, more, yeah, more yeah, yeah. than you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember when we uh, when I used to host radio, uh, a, a lot of the stuff, even radio is a lot more unfiltered, yeah, right? Like the bit. whole concept of radio is a little bit more unfiltered. But I remember we would uh, like we would be recording for hours and then you know, it's a 20 minute a tw- slot. Yeah, it's a 20 minute slot with like three set of breaks that are five minute each is in the breaks. And you're like, you didn't even hear half of the conversation. And yeah, so the whole idea of making Feature Friday Plus in this setting is that we actually get to converse and understand yeah. the, the, the artist's perspective. But, but the mind blowing bit, brother, is that people, people actually watch. stay until the end. Yeah. Like they, they, they really like, it's unbelievable the amount of messages that come. Oh yeah, th- this little bit of like an hour and 37 minutes or two hours and 15 minutes. I love that bit of the come And I'm like, what? You stayed for the whole thing? And that and that's like the majority of the people. So it's I think maybe it just it's it, just how it's evolved. Maybe yeah, yeah maybe it's yeah. a say on on gen, you know, that there might be a need for genuine long yeah. format content, mm. you know. 
um, because it, it seems everything is so fast and quick at the moment. And processed. And processed, yeah, kind of edited. So yeah. So you now, know, if this is all, if this is all part of the new norm, then I would probably say it's not just part of a new norm, but a better norm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would agree. Where right. people, you can capture people's attention, and we're just talking. Yeah. But people want to stay glued and 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 want to learn and know, maybe get encouraged, inspired, and all. And yeah, that's I, I know I did. <laughs> <laughs> I know I definitely did. So thank you again so much, Gary. What a pleasure and honor. And um, we will totally be looking forward to any of your future projects. And welcome back absolutely anytime you like. Well, everybody, Gary Valenciano, man. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, everyone. No and hey, yeah. Dad, thanks, uh, thanks so much. <laughs> thank, you, sir. thank you. Hi to the family. <laughs> I'll do that, sir. God bless you guys. Keep Let's on see. reaching out. Oh, and by the way, wait, I needed to. Uh, yeah, I just want to say that you and I, you know, we we have something in common here because I can see that thing, and I just wanted to congratulate. What? Thank you so much. <laughs> Let's go, lads. Congrats. What it's all in the family now. <laughs> it's all in the family now. Well, I love that. We go, Gary. We'll um, we'll we'll send gifts to each other when we all hit a million. <laughs> hey, hey, man! Fingers crossed. Man. I'm not gonna forget that. I'm not gonna forget that. Absolutely thank not. you so much for the support that you've given Kiana. No, no, uh, no, 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 no. So it's, very much. You're, ma you're making it sound like she doesn't need, like she doesn't deserve it. She's an absolute joke, dude. And and the funny. Her music is just so great. I know. I know. I know. It's I know. fantastic. I know. It's just that I'm her dad, and you know, <laughs> when I see people supporting her, I'm like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I, I don't know if you watched the podcast, but it was like uh, I, I was so surprised that I had actually come across her music before. Um, I and think we, we four years already, ago. Yeah, we had already added it to our common listening playlist, and we didn't know who she was. But that was before the the whole idea of Feature Friday grew, and and kind of the idea of discovering music from all over the world. So um, when we came across her music, it was very clear. It was very obvious. The the talent. The and the beautiful way of like expressing her mind that mm -hmm. yeah and then it turns out she's actually got like, like she's a brilliant <laughs> mind as well when she speaks she's like bloody hell she's an interesting individual she's like oh my god you know like the way she she creates music and it's like oh i understand yeah. that but yeah. probably some of it must come from you mate and <laughs> some of it must come from her mother oh, so they don't think you <laughs> no listen have you heard did she did she play a little bit of her new songs no she no. didn't no, 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 no. Uh, she was mentioned like, it. She was holding back the whole time. <laughs> I, 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 never mind. I won't say much, but <laughs> it's something. It's something to watch out for. Not yeah, just really one. Not just two. It. Not yeah. just three songs. But she's got a whole bunch that she played here one time, and I was like, Oof, "Wait, nice. you wrote this? Yes, I did." Then she played another one. You wrote this too? Yeah. I mean, it's just like wow. And she was asking me, "What do you think? You think I should bring up this? You think I should bring up this dr the drum sound here or the, the 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 pad sound here?" And I'm like, "Yeah, you you can do that there and on." And then I was oh, giving her some tips, but it felt good that she was asking her dad, you know, nice, about nice. some tips. And I'm but watch out for those songs. We, we will, will do. We will she, do. She, uh, I'm I'm sure she will uh, she'll let us know when when the project releases and stuff like that. We'll, we'll get in yeah. touch regardless. Here. Uh, sure. not, and both, I mean, both would be awesome. Actually, if you do like a little family podcast, then at one point you guys come on, both of you together, and then be that fun. That would be yeah. fantastic. Sure, would sure, love sure, sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll, okay, we'll, I'll, 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 let's make that happen. Okay. Sure, we'll just wait for for Kiana, or maybe when when yeah when something releases and stuff like that, we'll we'll get in touch okay. and we'll we'll try to sort something out. One little uh, last one, Gary, before you go. Have you been you've been to London? Have you? Yes. Performing here. Yes. Oh, nice. Because I, I was going to say, like, the, the Filipino community here is huge. But also, it's huge. But also, a lot of people who are not Filipino know a lot of Filipino artists. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know that. Like, a lot of London people actually know a lot of a Filipino lot of artists. And you're like, what? It could be because of the covers. It could be simply because, yeah. like, people like... Uh, the musical uh, community is huge in the Filipino uh, Brought artistry, and I, obviously, I trained in theater, musical theater here in London. So I, as soon as I started training, uh, one of my first go-to people to look at was Lea Salonga, <laughs> and and I didn't know she was Filipino. And then I started doing research and blah blah, and you come across her beautiful career, and I was like, wow, <laughs> I need to move to the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> See if I can capture some of that essence. <laughs> you know, you come to the Philippines, both of you, including your dad, when all of the when all of the uh, social, I mean, when all of this, the whole pandemic is tied down. 
and you get to listen to the music in the islands, people oh, wow. performing and you know they're just going, oh, it's like I can just sit back and just listen. Anything from dance music to just somebody with a ukulele and he's just singing, you know, his own version of whatever. Nice. It's that's everything you've said about the Philippines. You can see it in those pockets. Oh. in those islands and all. It's a different experience altogether. Those are the times when I wish I wasn't too popular. So I can oh. <laughs> part of the audience and just listen to what everybody's listening to without anybody looking at me and saying, oh, hey, why don't Scary. you sing something? I said, no, no, I just want to enjoy the moment. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for enjoying, you know, but I hope someday you can travel here. Oh, absolutely. We, 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 absolutely. Experience the music of the islands. It's, ah. That that's that sounds cool. like a perfect way to spend some time. Uh, uh, that's definitely on our bucket list of things to do. So well, uh, we artists here know who you guys are. So if ever you're coming <laughs> over, you know we'll take you to the show. We'll take you to ASAP, the show that I spoke about, and you yeah. can just see, you know what it's like. It's crazy, but it's it's fun. Oh no, I definitely awesome. looking forward to that. Well, Gary, brother, everybody, Gary Valenciano, awesome stuff, man. Uh, make Thank us you. Call God again. bless you guys. And I'm looking forward to seeing more of you and hearing more of what you put out also for people like yeah. me to, to learn and to, <laughs> to be exposed to. You know, just thank you so very much. This means a lot to me. Absolutely, Thanks. Gary. Same to us, man. All love. Be See blessed, you later. Everybody. Gary Valenciano, everybody. Thank you so much. Anytime.